Dr. Lance Davis here. Uh, we've talked about a lot of dive safety issues so far. Now I just want to go into a few preventative ideas. Uh, the main thing being the use of the dive tables. Uh, this is simply uh, some advice. Remember the dive tables are statistical advantages. They're not absolute. And they are only there to protect you against decompression sickness. So let's think back way in the history of diving, years and years and years ago, before we had dive tables, before we had good recompression therapy. If you were a commercial diver, uh, history says that about 25% of commercial divers, the people who built our basic infrastructure, tunnels and bridges years ago, the mortality rate, the death rate from that profession was as high as 25%. Now that's crazy. We don't even conceive of that in this day and age, but what it should remind you is that diving is still a dangerous activity. Human bring, beings are not meant to breathe underwater. Human beings do not have a natural capacity to deal with abnormal amounts of nitrogen without some degree of regulation. So going, thinking about your dive tables. Those were developed over time. They are statistical bell curves, and they are not perfect. So I've had a few divers, despite all of my efforts to get information out there, say, well, I can't be bent, I shouldn't be bent, I did everything right. And that's just not true. You can do everything right. You can follow your tables. You can be conservative. You can be hydrated. You can avoid alcohol. You can be a perfectly healthy, fit diver and still get symptomatic decompression illness. So if something is new or different after diving, Let's get it attended to. Remember, if it's emergent, let's activate the emergency system. If it's routine, contact me and, or the hyperbaric unit and let's get it sorted out. Okay, but don't ever say that just because you shouldn't be bent, then you couldn't be bent. So that's one bit of prevention. I can't stress enough the importance of uh, staying hydrated and being moderate with your alcohol intake with relation to diving. So if you drink a lot of alcohol, you're running two risk factors for decompression sickness. The first is that alcohol itself is toxic and can make your tissues a little more likely to be unable to handle nitrogen properly. And secondly, alcohol is a diuretic and so it's dehydrating you. And dehydration is an independent risk factor for decompression illness and it's also uh, an independent risk factor for other problems underwater and just not feeling great. So you want to drink lots of water. Really, you shouldn't dive unless your urine is running pale yellow or clear. Pale yellow or clear. If it's dark and concentrated, you should drink a lot of water the day of diving and make sure that you, that you dilute your urine, which means you're well hydrated. Uh, certainly the question of flying after diving, give yourself a long window. Don't get in a plane and go up to decreased altitude within 12 hours after diving, I'd prefer to see a whole day. If you're going on a trip to the Caribbean, take the last day to relax, sit on the beach, skin dive, not under compressed air, do other things and completely off gas that nitrogen before you get on a plane. I treated several divers from this community who got bent in the last day of the dive, didn't notice the symptoms till they got off the plane which means they really got bent when they went up to altitude. It is a real phenomenon and you just don't want to deal with that. So those are some basic preventative tips. I would rather talk to you about a dive clearance exam than a, an injury or an illness as a result of diving.